The movie is set in the 17th century, where France is under the rule of King Louis XIV. The city of Paris is in a state of turmoil, as most of the population is either starving or sent to war. This has caused a huge uproar in the city, and riots are in full swing. However, instead of fulfilling their demands, the king locks the rioters in dilapidated prisons where they are left to die a slow and painful death. Among them is an unknown man who is known by the nickname The Man in the Iron Mask. In the next scene, the leader of the Royal Musketeers group, D'Artagnan, inspects the city on his horse. Unfortunately, he is quickly pelted with rocks as he works for the king. Turns out that there were four popular musketeers in the past, but only D'Artagnan remains loyal to the king now. As for the other three musketeers, Aramis has become a reverend, Porthos has become a drunkard who only cares about women, and Athos has retired to his farm. As Porthos and Aramis live together, they often quarrel because of their contrasting lifestyles. One day, while they are at it, they are visited by D'Artagnan, who informs the duo that the king wants to see them. Elsewhere, Athos hands his son, Raoul, his wife's ring, so that he can propose to his girlfriend. Turns out that Athos's wife died long ago, and his son wants to become a musketeer, just like him. The scene then cuts to the royal palace, where the king is briefing his generals about an upcoming war. Just then, one of his consultants, Pierre, informs him about the riots in the city. He also suggests that they distribute the food from the army reserves so that the riots will stop. However, King Louis orders him to distribute rotten food instead. Meanwhile, Aramis arrives at the palace, and the king welcomes him warmly. The king then orders Aramis to find the leader of the Jesuits, who has been causing civil unrest. Not only that, he also orders the former musketeer to eliminate the so-called traitor in the name of God and France. Aramis is hesitant about the plan, but he has no choice but to agree. Meanwhile, a special occasion is about to take place inside the palace, and several people have arrived to be a part of it. Among the crowd, Raoul is with his girlfriend, Christine. Christine. As the duo is walking, the king spots Christine from afar and gets smitten by her instantly. He then organizes a game and separates Raoul from his girlfriend, just as he is about to propose. As everyone is busy with the game, the king draws Christine near his palace and tries getting close to her. However, Christine lets him know that she is faithful to Raoul. Despite this, the king attempts to kiss her, but just then, they are distracted by D'Artagnan, who has been watching them closely from nearby. Suddenly, a Jesuit spy comes running to assassinate King Louis, but D'Artagnan manages to eliminate him with his insane sword throw. The king is taken aback by the incident, while Raoul quickly takes Christine away. That night, D'Artagnan finds out that Raoul has withdrawn his application from the Royal Musketeer selection. Confused, he visits Athos to find out the truth, but the latter is also oblivious. Soon, Raoul arrives dejected and informs the duo that he couldn't propose to Christine, and now he has been drafted for war against the Dutch. This enrages Athos, who suspects the greedy king of sending away his son so that he can have Christine all to himself. D'Artagnan also feels sorry for the young man and assures Athos that he will speak to the king. In the next scene, a horde of rioters attack the palace for distributing rotten food. As things get out of control, the musketeers get ready to fire at the rioters. However, D'Artagnan stops them from doing so and confronts the angry mob all alone. He then flexes some of his sword moves and gains the crowd's trust. After this, he vows to everyone that he will get them food soon, and hearing this, everyone disperses in an orderly manner. Later, he enters a secret passage inside the palace and informs the king that fresh food has to be delivered to the mob. D'Artagnan also asks the king about his intentions with Christine, but the latter becomes unruly and replies that he can do whatever he pleases, since he is the king. Elsewhere, Raoul and his group are preparing to invade the enemy's territory, but before advancing, he hands over a letter to another general, requesting him to deliver it to the royal palace. Soon, he leads the charge, but unfortunately, a Dutch cannon explodes near him, killing him instantly. The news of his death quickly reaches Christine and his father, and both of them break down in tears. However, Athos develops a rage for vengeance, and he heads to the palace to confront the king. On reaching, he takes down several musketeers alone, but D'Artagnan quickly subdues him. He then pleads with his friend to calm down so that he doesn't suffer the same fate his son did. Athos agrees to walk away but he vows to take revenge against the king. Before leaving, he also calls D'Artagnan a traitor for 
protecting his son's killer. Inside the palace, King Louis arranges a lavish dinner for Christine, but she can't pull herself together to enjoy the meal as she still mourns her lover's death. However, Louis assures her that all he wants is her happiness. He then takes her to a private room and the duo start making out. Meanwhile, Aramis gathers his old musketeer friends inside the catacombs of Paris and briefs them about his secret mission. He reveals that King Louis has assigned him to track down and eliminate the Jesuit leader before he can cause any more riots. However, the only problem is that he is the Jesuit leader himself. The revelation stuns his friends, but Athos and Porthos quickly agree to support his plans. On the contrary, D'Artagnan refuses to help them as he is loyal to the king. Hearing this, Athos bursts in anger and confronts D'Artagnan that if they ever cross paths again, he will not hesitate to kill. In the next scene, we are taken to the prison of Bastille, where the man in the iron mask is peeking at the open sky, wondering when he'll be out. Meanwhile, the three musketeer friends arrive there on a boat, disguised as foreigners. Aramis pretends to be a priest, and he manages to enter the prisoner's cell to read his monthly prayers. Turns out that he's carrying a corpse who's wearing an iron mask similar to that of the prisoner. Aramis then hides the boy inside his body and calls out to the guards, telling them that the prisoner died of a plague virus. Scared, the guards immediately burn the corpse, leaving no trace behind. Following this, the group carefully escapes the place and reaches a countryside house. There, they clean up the prisoner, and in a shocking turn of events, he is revealed to be King Louis's twin brother, Philippe. Philippe mentions that he used to live peacefully in a farm, but one day, some soldiers forcefully took him away to a prison and confined him to a mask. Later, Aramis finally reveals the truth to him. Turns out that after his mother, Anne, gave birth to the twins, their father, King Louis XIII, decided to discard one one son to avoid any territorial conflicts between them. As a result, Philippe was hidden far away in the prison of Bastille. Only on his death day, the king revealed it to his wife and to his other son, King Louis XIV. Anne desperately tried to bring her son back, but the greedy king made sure his twin brother would never see the light again by concealing his face with an iron mask. Moreover, Aramis reveals that he was the one who put the mask on Philippe. He is sorry for the atrocities Philippe has been through and vows to restore his birthright by replacing him with King Louis. However, his friends are skeptical about the plan, as they think it is too dangerous. Back in the palace, King Louis gets a message informing his twin's death, but he is unconcerned by it. He then asks his men to deliver the news to his mother and opens another box. There, he finds the iron mask and is taken aback. Meanwhile, after getting the news, Anne breaks down in tears, but D'Artagnan approaches and consoles her. Here, it is revealed that they had a romantic affair before D'Artagnan chose to become loyal to the king. Elsewhere in the countryside, the three friends try to convince Philippe to be a part of their plan, but he refuses. He claims that he doesn't want to pretend to be someone else and wants to live his life free. However, he agrees when the musketeers share their dream of a unified France where all the people can live peacefully. Following this, the three start teaching Philippe on how to act like a king, and they practice day and night. Meanwhile, as Christine finally starts getting used to the royalty of the palace, she suddenly gets the letter that Raoul had sent her before dying. There, Raoul has predicted his death and also mentioned that he forgives her for being with the king. The letter devastates Christine, and she realizes that the king orchestrated her lover's death. Elsewhere, Aramis meets Anne at a confessional and mentions that Philippe is alive. In the next scene, the royal palace is hosting a masquerade ball where hundreds of noble people are dancing elegantly. Aramis, Athos, Porthos, and Philippe also arrive, disguised in fancy costumes. When the king joins the crowd to dance, he starts seeing several people with iron masks, making him dizzy. Turns out that the musketeers had planned it all along. When the king enters his room, the group takes the opportunity and sneaks inside from the secret entrance. There, Aramis confronts the king and knocks him unconscious. When he wakes up, he finds his brother, Philippe, dressed like the king. Before he can call for help, he is gagged and covered by Porthos, while Philippe nervously leaves the room to confront the crowd. Outside, as Philippe sits on the throne for the first time, Christine suddenly confronts him and calls him a killer. However, instead of apprehending her like Louis normally would, he calms her down by promising to make things right again. This surprises the crowd, and D'Artagnan 
D'Artagnan also begins to suspect him. He then orders the guards to be on high alert and escorts Philippe to the underground dock. Downstairs, the three musketeers, along with Louis, make their way to the port where their boat awaits. Suddenly, they are spotted by the guards, and a lengthy tussle ensues. Despite being outnumbered, the three musketeers show exemplary fighting skills and manage to swat away the bad guys. However, as they are about to escape, the door closes and they are caught by the guards, led by D'Artagnan. The friends have an intense face-off, but just then, Athos uncovers King Louis' face and threatens to kill him. D'Artagnan is shocked by the imposter, and he orders his guards to open the gate. Following this, the two groups trade the boys, and as the musketeers are about to depart with Philippe, the guards again recapture him, forcing Athos, Porthos, and Aramis to flee alone. Inside the palace, King Louis stares at Philippe angrily and reveals to D'Artagnan that the boy is not an imposter, but his own brother. Hearing this, D'Artagnan is taken aback. Just then, Anne enters the room, and both she and D'Artagnan start begging the king to pardon Philippe. Despite all this, the greedy king orders his men to throw Philippe in the same prison with the same mask over his face. Later, as D'Artagnan is trying to console Anne, he suddenly hears a scream from the other room. On reaching there, he finds out that Christine has committed the unthinkable. D'Artagnan becomes devastated, but Louis couldn't care less about it. Elsewhere, Philippe is fitted with the iron mask again, and the special key is handed over to King Louis. Meanwhile, the three musketeers somehow evade the guards and enter a room where they find a note left by D'Artagnan. It writes that he has arranged a ten-minute window for them, with the help of which they can save Philippe. At first, the trio assumes it to be a trap, but after much consideration, they conclude that their old friend would never betray them. Hence, they suit up in their famous musketeer costume and head to the said location to save Philippe. In the next scene, the trio meets D'Artagnan at a prison, and together they manage to find Philippe. As they try to escape, Louis along with his men block all the entrances. Left with no way out, the four musketeers bring back the old days and start battling against Louis's men. Despite being outnumbered, they use their impressive skills and subdue the soldiers. However, more men arrive, and the musketeers along with Philippe are forced to escape to another room. There, Philippe requests that the group give him up so that they can be spared, but D'Artagnan reveals that he could never give up his son. Here, it is revealed that both Louis and Philippe were born to D'Artagnan and Anne while they were having an affair. Meanwhile, Louis asks the group to surrender, but much to his surprise, the musketeers charge at them with tremendous courage. Even Louis's guards are left in awe of their valor, so they hold back their weapons in respect. Seeing this, King Louis becomes in enraged and swings a dagger at Philippe, but D'Artagnan gets in the way and takes the hit. Sadly, he passes away among his friends, sons, and army generals. Philippe is left devastated, but soon he swaps clothes with his brother and puts him in an iron mask. He then orders the guards to take the imposter away and announces that Aramis, Athos, and Porthos are his new royal advisors. In the final scene of the movie, King Philippe, disguised as King Louis XIV, along with the three musketeers, attend D'Artagnan's funeral. There, Philippe approaches Athos and expresses his desire to be his son, and the latter gladly agrees. The movie ends as it is revealed that after Philippe took over, France became a prosperous and powerful nation. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.